we're going to go on no matter what. That's good. Uh, we're going to take our prayer request. Remember Brother Pat. Uh, some of you were here this morning and I gave you a report that he has gout in his foot. And uh, so he is uh, downstairs. He said he could hear the teaching. He said, Brother Roy was really wound up this morning. He said, I can hear him real plain this morning. So he can hear everything that's going on, I hope. I said, I couldn't believe he was still asleep. I, I checked, looked in on him two, a couple different times while I was down there. And, I said, with everybody downstairs, you would have thought that he would have been awake, but he was sound asleep. I checked to make sure he was still breathing and everything, <laughs> but he was sleeping. But anyway, just remember him and lift him up before the Lord. Someone else have a uh, brother Dennis. Oh, well, my feet kind of bobbing and everything, and everything, and pray for me. And left the women and all the men and women on the and home. He never bite the church even you. All right, I'll take it, Dennis. Sister Daisy, like the Daisy the flower. <laughs> Sister Jennifer. Sister Judy, yes, she fell in the hole and twisted her ankle. Amen. And please remember Judy, too, also with the death of Ronnie and everything. It's just, she is just really having a hard time with it. And uh, so just lift her up before the Lord. We know God's able to give her the comfort she needs. Brother Dennis, do you have another one? Lord, never thank you. It's great for me to thank you get better for me. All right. Brother Raymond. Yes, amen with the loss of her husband. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else have a prayer request? A sister Caroline. Amen. Sister Pat, Brother Jean's not here. Has anybody talked to him? No, they weren't here this morning either, were they? That's very unusual. Mm -hmm. Georgia, I'm sorry. Brother Christopher. they want to make known. That's yes, unusual. Well, usually every hand's up, you know. Brother Chris. Let me pray for my sister. Yes, we've been, we've been praying for Sister Kelly. We were just talking about her today, uh, that we wish she would get in church like she was. And she was just singing the youth choir and 
everything. She's got five children, but she had, she's um, uh, was went to our church for a long, long time as a teenager, and uh, so just pray for Kelly and lift her up before the Lord. Yep, yep. And so anyway, she has MS, and so please remember her and lift her up. George. Brother Gary. Amen. Remember that, Sister Val. Spoken request by the uplift of hands. There's so many needs tonight. Amen. Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Let's all pray together. Mighty Saviors, we come before you this night. Truly, we glorify you, lift you up, and magnify your holy name. So thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can look at thee and know with assurance that you are a way maker where the seamen to be no way, Lord Jesus. There's a, you are the one, hallelujah, that we can look unto for each and everything, Lord Jesus. We know that you are able to deliver and to separate. We know, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed, that you took our afflictions upon yourself, that we can walk in victory, Lord Jesus. Just have your way, Lord, that each and every one of these requests that has come up before thee, Lord, knowing full well that you are the one that is able, Lord, for two or, two or three, hallelujah, free upon touching anything, that it shall be done by your stripes, Lord Jesus. We know, hallelujah, that we are made whole, and we just give you the praise and glory and the honor. We lift you up, and we magnify you. As we lift you up this night, Lord Jesus, draw by your Holy Spirit and truly get a praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' precious name. Let the church say amen. Amen. Well, it was awful quiet. It seemed like I was only praying there for a little bit. <laughs> amen. God is good. Uh -huh. Hey, gals have got a song tonight. All right. Yeah. Oh, they asked me to ask the same car ride.
minor and G. Yeah.
it's the second verse then. I thought I can do a lot on my own. I can do it. I can do it. Candy, I can do it. It goes to G flat in that one spot, okay? Yeah, you look for it, George, and then I'll be my crutch, but I'll just, I can do it, okay?
journey.
will work. That will work. Well, I'm glad to be here. I've been looking forward to this. If you have your Bible, go with me to 3rd John. 3rd John. Say amen. amen. Beginning at verse number one. The elder unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Father, thank you for your word tonight. I pray that you will lead us into revelation. Lord, that you will reveal your word to us in our minds and in our hearts and in our spirits. God, I pray for the anointing to be upon each and every one that's in this place tonight, Lord, that no hindering spirit can bother the word as it goes forth. I pray tonight, God, that your will be done and be accomplished in our midst tonight, Father. Lord, that no one would receive the glory but you. I pray, Heavenly Father, that that we would allow the Holy Spirit to move and operate in just the way that he wants to and that your will would be accomplished. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Amen. And amen. The Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. God's called us, thank you, God's called us to a life of freedom. My question is, if where the Spirit of the Lord is, and there's liberty, then why is it that oftentimes that even though we're filled with the Spirit of God, we have bondages in our lives? I think that's a good question. Yes, amen. John was writing this letter as he gave it to Gaius, he told Gaius that he wanted him to have success on his journey. That's what he was talking about in verse number two, where it says to be in health even as his soul prospers. He wanted him to have a good journey, a successful journey. How many know God's called you to be successful? Amen. He's called you to be successful in everything that you endeavor to do. It's His will that you succeed. It's His will that you succeed. I want you to get that. What does it mean, though, to succeed? Because a lot of times when you talk about success, you talk about making a lot of money. Not everybody who makes money is successful. And not everybody who's broke is successful. Money does play into the picture. But that's not all there is to it. Amen? Right. All right. First of all, we're going to have to define what success is. Success is the original result or outcome of a thing. In other words, this microphone right now is being successful. Because it's doing what it was created to do. It's accomplishing a certain task. Therefore, it's successful. You've been created to accomplish certain tasks in your life in being a Christian. One is to become Christ-like. How many know that every day that goes by in your life, you should be more like Jesus Christ? You should be more like Jesus now than you were six months ago. Your life should be one that, was, that, that, that is closer to Him now than it ever has been. You should be on a road to success. It's also, success is also favorable or a satisfactory outcome or result. To be 
successful one must come about or take place or turn out to be as what was hoped for, a successful mission, having, ex having achieved success. Now get this. Success is not avoiding failure or disappointments or overwhelming odds, but it's facing every obstacle and every setback with enough courage and determination to continue. We'll read that again. Success is not avoiding failure or disappointments or overwhelming odds, but it is facing every obstacle and setback with enough courage and determination to continue. Success is becoming what God has called you and created you to be and utilizing the gifts and talents that he's given to you. That's success. So when you start becoming what God has created you to become, you're on your road to success. Now, I said a moment ago that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty or there's freedom or there's success. And yet, there seems to be bondages in the child of God. Too many bondages of one kind or another. Whether it be a sickness, whether it be a disease, whether it be whether it be uh, 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 some kind of baggage that you that, that you carry, uh, it, could, it, 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 it could be it could be something that uh, uh, that is holding you down, something that is keeping you from becoming all that God wants you to become. Uh, it, 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 it could be becoming all of that, but it all could be overtaken by the power of the Spirit of the living God Amen. through His working and His success in you to make you what you are to be. Alright. So what keeps us down? Alright. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> One of the things that keeps us down is our choices. You are where you are today based on the choices that you've made up to this point in your life. So no one is at fault for you being where you are. You may have had some help getting where you are, but you had to make the necessary choices to get there. So if, if, if the choices you've been making have not been working out very well, then you, may, you need to make different kind of choices. You need to examine the choices that you've been making and the decisions that you have been making. Your choices made yesterday and they will form your future. Your choices. Choices are important. You could choose to be all that God has created you to be, or you could choose just to get along enough to get into heaven. Or you could choose to use the talents that God's given you to the best of your ability, and God receive the glory and the honor and the praise for your life, for living a life that's created after His image and after His likeness. Amen. Amen. You make a choice of whether you read your Bible or not. You make a choice whether you pray or not. You might say, well, such, such and such got in my way. No, you just chose not to do it. Uh, it I mean, it's just, I don't mean to be so direct, but it's true. You just chose not to do it. Amen. I mean, have you ever decided, okay, I'm going to read my Bible every day. Only to read it for about three days in a row and then you miss a day, then you miss another day, then you miss another day. And then the next thing you know, three weeks has went by and you haven't even picked it up. Amen? Amen. What created that? Choices. 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 You can get as involved in the Word of God as you want to be involved in. You can study this word as much as you want to study it, if you so desire. Choices. 
The more you study the Word of God, the greater revelation you'll get. And the greater revelation you get, the more freedom you'll have. And the more freedom you have, the more success will come your way. Amen. 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 So success is choices. It's making, it's making choices. Now in making choices, you've got to know what you want. You have got to make up your mind what you want in God. It's important. You didn't get saved just to be saved from hell. You got saved to make heaven your home. But in the meantime, you're supposed to experience a little bit of heaven right here on earth. Amen. 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 It's all not supposed to be bad. Amen. Every day is not supposed to be a bad day. Matter of fact, let me show you a secret on how to turn a bad day into a good day. You can start living from the inside out instead of living from the outside in. You can tell the world, you're not going to tell me how to live. You're not going to tell me whether I can be happy or not. You're not going to tell me whether I can have joy or not. You're not going to tell me whether I can have peace or not. I choose to have peace because I'm going to live from the inside out. And the outside is not going to dictate to my inside. Hallelujah. Amen. And sometimes you just got to speak to yourself and tell yourself, you got to line up to the Word of God, buddy, and get yourself straightened up. Hallelujah. And do what God has called you to do. Sometimes you just got to look in a mirror and see what God's created you to be and say, look, we're going after the image of Jesus Christ from glory to glory, image to image, power to power, authority to authority in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Just becoming what God has called you to become. you got to make up your mind what you want to be. Your destiny is determined by the choices that you make. You choose whether or not you want to go to church. It's your choice. Nobody can make you and nobody can forbid you. Has anybody ever forbid you to come to church? No, I, I've been... Uh, I've been asked to leave a couple of churches. <laughs> I've been asked to pick up my toys and go somewhere else with me. <laughs> I was teaching in one church, and the pastor came to me after about six weeks of teaching. He came to me, to my, he came to my house, and uh, he. Uh, this was back when I used to sing, and, and, and I had a I had a lot of I had a lot of tapes and, and stuff. And he brought my tapes. He had them in the car with him, and I'm thinking, what is he doing? He told me, he said, "You're too smart for us. I think it's just time for you to move on and go somewhere else." I thought, well, at least he said I was too smart for him. <laughs> At least there's a compliment there. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, he asked me to leave. Why don't you just leave and go on down the road? You're too smart for us. He couldn't handle, he couldn't handle the word because he wasn't studying it like he should be studying it. So he couldn't handle, he couldn't handle the word. So I made a choice to leave. Now I could have been bold and all been out of shape and said, I'm not going nowhere. God told me to come here and teach. I could have done that. It would have created a problem. It would have created a problem with the pastor. It would have created a problem with the church. It would have created a big problem. So I chose just to go on my way and go somewhere else and let God use me the way God wanted to use me where people would accept what I've got to say. Amen. Amen. So my my destiny was determined by the choice that I make. You're going to have days where you fail. 
You're going to have days when things don't go right for you. You ever had one of them days? Where no matter what you do, it just don't seem to go right? Uh, you try, but it just doesn't seem to go right. It's like everything you put your hand to goes south. One of them days. Well, how do I get on top of those days? You make a choice not to let it bother you. I didn't say this was easy, but it's the truth. Amen. You make a choice, a quality choice, that I'm not going to let this bother me. Because, listen, you're only responsible for what you can take care of. If you can't, if you can't take care of it, if it's out of your control, then you're not responsible for it. But if it's something in your control, then baby, you're responsible for it and you need to live up to that responsibility to be successful. Are you getting this? All right, all right, all right. I just wonder if y'all are listening or you're too full. Okay. <laughs> all right, now watch. We need to stop majoring on minor things. You ever know somebody that's sick all the time? I mean, all the time they're sick. They're sickly all the time. No matter what you ask them, they're sickly all the time. They got something going on all the time. And they're going to tell you about it. They're going to let you know that they're sickly. I just wonder if those kind of people ever have a healthy day. I don't like to hang around somebody who's sickly all the time. Sister Daisy just said it. They'll drag you down. Amen. You got to go when you don't feel like going. You got to do when you don't feel like doing. You got to go anyhow. Someone say praise the Lord. You got to go anyhow. Praise God. And if you, that is if you want to live a life of success. Quit majoring on the minor things. Quit fretting. Stop worrying. This too shall pass. Well, I'm just so worried about my kids. Now, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me share something with you. I have... I have seven children. I have 26 grandchildren. I have 14 great-grandchildren. I don't worry about none of them. Because let me tell you something. I found out a long time ago as a parent, they're going to do what they're going to do. It doesn't matter what I think about it. And I am not going to keep myself up all night long worrying about it. I'm going to put them in the hands of God and let God take care of the ministry part. And I'll just be a daddy to them. Amen. Amen. I could have money if I didn't have seven children. Yeah. I might get to take a vacation if I didn't have so many children. Sounds like a voice of experience over there. Man. You got seven children yourself? Oh, my God. Seven girls? Do what now? 37 more? Down to 18. Yeah, but how many ball bats have you wore out? You ain't wore out a ball bat or a shotgun or nothing. <laughs> oh. Well, I had, 
I've got five girls and two boys. And let me tell you something, the boys were a lot easier to raise than the girls. That's the truth. The boys were easier to raise than the girls. Well, the boys didn't get into the stuff the girls got into. That's the truth. The boys didn't get into the stuff. That, the boys didn't sneak and do what the girls did. The girls were sneaky. My girls, my girls were sneaky. <laughs> I got one. I got one daughter that would rather lie to you than tell you the truth. I mean, that's just what. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. But I'm still daddy to them. I don't tell them how to live. I don't preach to them because it doesn't do any good. I just love them. That's the only way you're going to win them. Is just love them. So worrying about it, staying up half the night about it, is not going to cause you anything but a bunch of grief and heartache. So you might as well quit doing that. Quit majoring on minor things. You need to make a decision to see God bigger than the obstacle that is in front of you. See God bigger than the obstacle is that is in front of you. In other words, God is bigger than what's the matter. God is bigger than what's going on. God is mightier than what's going on. Alright. Next, success is becoming a doer of the Word. Not just a hearer, but a doer. If the Word tells you to love your neighbor then you need to love your neighbor. That's right. Doesn't matter what your neighbor is doing, you got to love your neighbor. I'm not talking about a love affair. <laughs> I'm not talking about a sneaky kind of love where you get yourself in trouble after a while. That's not what I'm talking about. We need to love one another unconditionally. We need to know that the love of God is real and that it works if we'll just walk in it. Yes. Become a doer of the Word. If the Word says you can have health, then walk like you have health. Amen. Talk like you have health. If the Word says you have joy, have joy. Don't entertain doubt and unbelief. Have joy. If the Word says you have peace, then entertain peace. Do peaceful stuff. Do you know one thing that, one thing that is wrong, wrong with a lot of American homes is we're letting too much junk come into our homes through the television. I'm not against TV. But I am sure against a lot of stuff that's on that thing. Yes, I'm here for you. I'm and you and, and and you wonder why your children are being rebellious and they're watching watching Family Guy and The Simpsons and no. SpongeBob. No. I realize Spongebob is a cartoon. I realize that. But if you really watch it, you'll find out how much rebellion is in that cartoon. Uh-huh. Yes. If you just watch it and listen to it, it's full of rebellion. And then your kids watch it, and then your kids get rebellious, and you can't figure out why, and it's because you let that rebellious spirit into your home. We're letting things come into our home that has no business being in our home, and it's disrupting us spiritually. Yes. Amen? Amen. You say amen or oh me, you know it's the truth. Amen. I don't care. You may have a you may have a you may have a favorite TV program that no matter what you what you've got to do, you're going to do everything you've got to do to watch that TV program. If it comes hell or high water, you're going to watch that TV program now. That's why they have the DVRs now. You can now at least now you can record them and make sure you get to watch that thing, man. And don't nobody bother me. I'm going to turn my cell phone out. 
while I watch this because this is my favorite program. I wonder what would happen if the Bible would become our favorite program and we'd make up our mind. I ain't answering my cell phone while I'm reading and studying my book. Praise God. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to get my head in the book because I'm looking for a successful Christian walk. I'm looking for a success in God. I'm looking to know what God wants me to be and where God wants me to be. I'm looking to know and find out just exactly how I'm created in His image and in His likeness. I, 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 I'm wanting to know more about Him than I am about this world. How, how many know politics isn't going to get you anywhere? And I don't care this is a voting year. It ain't going to matter who gets elected. It ain't going to change anything. I'm here to tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you it's not going to change anything. God is in the world. It's written out. Written out the I mean, well, you just doused my hope. Well, some one may be a little bit better than another in one area, but they'll be even worse in another area. You see what I'm saying? So you got to make up your mind who to vote for. And you can find problems with both of them. Amen? You can find problems with both of them. Now, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I can find more problems with one of them than I can the other. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for the one that I find the least bit of problem with. I'm not looking for a problem-free person because there's not one of those that lives. Oh, everybody's got some problems of one sort or another. Success. To be successful, you must be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. You must not be afraid of taking risks. Stepping out by faith. You can preach about Peter all you want, about him failing while he was walking on the water. You can, you can downgrade that boy all you want to, talk about him losing faith and all that kind of garbage. You, you, you can be all, all over his back if you want to, but I'm here to tell you, he was the only one that got out of the boat. He was the only one that gave it a try. He was the only one that took a risk. He was the only one that even thought about giving it a try. He got out of the boat, praise God. And then he had enough sense to know when he started to, started to fall, he knew why he was falling. And he had enough sense to call on Jesus. While the other eleven hid in the bow of the boat like cowards. I'm here to tell you we, we are to live by faith and not by cowardice. Amen. 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 You've got to step out and take a risk. You've got to take a chance. That's right. Amen. Take a chance and pay your tithes for once. That's right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Don't get on the money issue. It's the I'm telling you, you're not blessed if you don't pay your tithe. That's right. I don't care how you try to cut it. You're not blessed. And you'll never be successful without being a good tither. That's not my gospel. That's the book. And the book says that if you'll do it, he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you can't even contain. Praise God. He'll bless you coming and going. He'll bless you coming in. He'll bless you going out. He'll bless your field. He'll bless your family. He'll bless your storehouse. He'll bless everything that you put your hand to. God is a blessing God. Hallelujah. Do you realize that God wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed? And I know that most of us really want to be blessed. Amen? Amen? Nothing selfish about that. I really want to be blessed. But God wants to bless me even more than I want to be blessed myself. He wants to bless his children. Matter of fact, he told Joshua. I preached on this the other night. He told Joshua to take Israel into the land of Canaan. And he said, when you get there, enjoy it. You can find that in the first chapter of Joshua. He told him to enjoy it. Get in there and enjoy it. God wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to enjoy living. He wants you to enjoy living for Him. He wants you to enjoy your blessings. He wants you to enjoy life in its fullest. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to be down in the mully grubs all the time. He wants you to enjoy living. Everybody say enjoy life. Enjoy life. And it's too short not to enjoy it. Amen. Amen. 
even with the aches and pains that come along with it. There's one thing about getting older. You find out what pain is all about. Amen. And you don't stop because of the pain. You go anyhow. You got to. Sometimes it'll get you down. And you got to take a day off here and a day off there. Sometimes it gets you down. You got to take a week or two off. But you'll get right back up. Amen. But when you get older, you'll find out that you hurt in places you didn't even know you had. You go, oh, God, I didn't even know I had that place. And it hurts the kingdom come. <laughs> the doctors diagnosed me just a few months ago with fibromyalgia. And that stuff is painful. It's painful. Some days I don't feel like going. Normally, it doesn't bother me when I'm preaching. But I'm hurting so bad tonight, it hurts to put one foot in front of the other. I've been that way all day long. It's, it's, just, been, it's just been one of those days. Yeah. Just to where, if, if, if I had let my body talk to me, I would not have came tonight. I would have said, I'll be there Monday night. Y'all can carry on without me Sunday night. I'll be there Monday night. But there's something about preaching and something about teaching. There's something about being in church. There's something about being around God's people. There's, some, there, 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 there's something about the fellowship. There's just something about the uh, uh, breaking the, wor the word of, of, of bread of life together. There's just something about being together that just soothes me and makes me well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you got to go. Everybody say you got to go. You got to go. Whether you want to or not, you got to go. Success is remaining determined. Listen to what John, Mac John Maxwell said this. I wish I'd have said it, but John Maxwell said this. The level of your determination to accomplish your work is measured by what it takes to make you quit. The level of your determination to accomplish your work is measured by what it takes to make you quit. How determined are you? Success is determination. It's facing divers problems and, 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 and circumstances. Abraham Lincoln went through several failures before he was ever elected to any kind of office. He lost more than he won. You read your history. He lost more than he won. But he came out a victor and is noted as one of the greatest presidents that we've ever had. Because of his self-determination. You're going to face many storms and adversities, but you go through them with courage. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David said, I can do it because you're with me. I can go because you're there. I can go because you're by my side. I can go because you lift me up and carry me through. I can make it because of you, oh God. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter what's surrounding me. It doesn't matter what the enemy is doing. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying. It doesn't matter what people's idea is. I can go through because of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. I can make it because of you. Listen to this. It is not as important where you are when the storm comes, but where you are when it's over. It's not as important as where you are when it comes, but where are you when it's over? Wow. That's a statement. When Katrina hit, there were thousands of people in New Orleans that did not leave. 
for whatever reason. I'm not saying that was smart. If you had a way out, you probably should have took the way out. Maybe some of them didn't have a way out, but they stayed. And they're still there. And they're still rebuilding. The Ninth Ward is still a mess, but they're still rebuilding. It's, been, it's become known as a city of second chances. Amen. People were determined. I'm not going to let this storm stop me. What do you do when it comes to storm in your life? When a financial storm hits, or a little bit of sickness comes your way, what happens? If a little bit of sickness comes to your way, do you think it's the big one for Elizabeth? <laughs> oh, this is the big one. This is the big one. I know it is. I can't hardly breathe. Well, go get checked. There's nothing wrong with going to the doctor and getting checked. But I, but I would, I, I, I've often wondered this. I've often wondered what would happen to us if we would run to God as much as we run to a doctor. No, I didn't say I, I didn't say I don't believe in doctors. I believe in doctors. I believe I believe that they get their wisdom from God. Amen. Now, not all of them are smart. Not all of them do good doctoring. I've often wondered when you go to the doctor if he failed that in his class at school. Maybe that's why he can't determine what you've got. He was in a party instead of studying. He got a C minus on it, but he passed. I want a doctor that got an A. I would, I'd like to go to a doctor and say, hey, can I see your grade sheet before you treat me? I mean, think about it. And there's some doctors that could care less about you, but they want your money. Amen. And if you got insurance, if you don't have insurance, they won't see you. And it doesn't do much good to have Medicare. They won't take you with Medicare hardly anymore either. How do I know? I have Medicare. <laughs> the truth. They want to know what your supplement A is. I don't have a supplement A. Well, you better get you a supplement A. Whatever supplement A is. In other words, pay more money for some insurance. I just go to veterans and let the veterans take care of me. That's what I do. I just go there. Most of them doctors there are crazy. Cause they got a they got a they got a pill for everything. You. you go on down there and you tell them you got something going on and they got a pill for it, buddy. I guarantee you right now they'll send you to the pharmacy and you'll have a pill. And then when they tell you to bring your drugs in, you'll have a big old grocery sack you carry it in. <laughs> I've seen guys carrying big old grocery sacks of pills. <laughs> Haven't you, brother? I've seen them carrying grocery sacks of pills. Are those all yours? Oh yeah. I take this one, then I got to take this one to counteract that one. <laughs> I have uh, such a bad problem with my legs. A few, uh, oh, it's been about two years ago now. My cholesterol just went off the charts. And they put me on some cholesterol medicine. And I couldn't take it because it made my legs hurt worse. Because that's one of the after effects of it. It gives you restless legs. And I couldn't take it because my legs were hurting me the way it was and it just compounded the hurt. So I had to do one of two things. Either, either, either stay with the pain or quit taking it. And if I was going to quit taking it, I was going to have to change my diet. Now I got, I got, I got checked here about, about a month ago and my cholesterol's fine. Everything's great. All my blood tests come back. Everything's, everything's great. But the fibromyalgia, I can live with that. I'm going to wake up one day and I ain't going to be hurting. Because God's healing me. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. 
See, I believe I believe in all kinds of healing. I believe in progressive healing. That takes a little while. You as, as you go, that's biblical. As you go, you're healed. Success. Everybody want to be successful. Don't you? Alright, watch this. Success involves sacrifice. Here's a part of being successful that most people don't want to get involved in. Because sacrifice involves commitment. Commitment is a bad word today. Commitment is a bad word today. Do you know that a recent poll out of Indiana University shows that 72% of marriages will have an extramarital affair. 72% of marriages one of the partners will have an extramarital affair. Something's wrong with that picture. Something's wrong with the lack of commitment factor. Amen. 72%. 59% of ministers have an extramarital affair. You don't know who you trust. That's why all your commitment has to be made to Jesus Christ and nobody else. But if you'll make your commitment to Jesus Christ, then your marriage will have a commitment. Amen. See what I'm saying? It'll automatically be there because you'll be obedient to the Word. Amen. And that commitment will be there. Some of you are looking at me and wondering if I'm one of the 59%. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you I don't have the strength. So, so you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> I'm too tired. <laughs> Thanks too much strength. <laughs> now that doesn't mean that I don't recognize beauty when I see it. I mean, if you're here, if you're here and telling me that you don't recognize beauty when you see it, you're lying to yourself and to me. I mean, it's it's. I know I know a young lady who who, who is the mother to my niece, and her and my my niece, her daddy. Uh, is, is my nephew and they had the baby out of wedlock and this and her mama is as I mean as, is as beautiful a woman that I have ever seen in my life she is absolutely gorgeous the little girl is just like her just a picture of her mom and she's turned lesbian not the little girl but the mom and I'm thinking Boy, that's a good waste of woman to live here. <laughs> Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Seriously. And I'm thinking, why? Why? Why do people do some of this crazy, silly, honorary stuff that they do? We live in a messed up world, folks. Their head's not on straight. Have you noticed that? But now I would like to know what would happen if the church would get its head on straight. <laughs> or if the church would just decide, I'm going to be committed to God and nothing's going to change that. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
My commitment is to Jesus Christ. I'm going to be committed to Him. I'm going to be committed to His Word. I'm going to be committed to the church. I'm going to make my commitment. And I'm going to stand strong on it and stay strong in it. And nothing's going to keep me from it. I wonder what would happen. I'll tell you what would happen. A revival would break out that we'd never be able to put a stop to. It would be a revival that would shake the very foundation that you stand upon. Just waiting for commitment. It's sacrifice. Commitment is the difference from those who do, from those who don't. It's the difference from those who stay, from those who go. It's the difference from those who lose, from those who win. It's the difference from those who finish, from those who quit. Commitment. Commitment is a testimony and proof to others where you stand. Without it, you'll fall for anything. You gotta have commitment. Commitment will keep you going even when you don't know all the answers to the solution or, or, or the solutions to the problem. Commitment will keep you going. Why? Because God's making you successful. See, He really did call you to be the head, not the tail. He really did call you to be above and not beneath. He really did call you to be the to be the uh, lender and not the borrower. He really called you to wear no weapon that formed against you can prosper. He's really called called you to be a winner. He's made you that way. So you should be doing nothing but gathering gold medals because you're winning all the time. Because He's made you that way. He's made you that way. Success is putting yourself in a position of opportunity. Got a couple more here and then I'm going to close. Success is putting yourself in a position of opportunity. Zacchaeus would have never got saved if he hadn't climbed up in the tree. Because not only did that climbing up in the tree cause Zacchaeus to see Jesus, it caused Jesus to see Zacchaeus. Right. Jesus said, I see you up there, Zacchaeus. Come on down. I'm coming to your house and salvation is coming to your whole household. Just come on down. What did he do? He put himself in a position of opportunity. And we Christians, if we want revival to break out in each and every one of us, we need to put ourselves in a position of opportunity. A position where God can do what God wants to do in our life. Don't say, well, I believe in making my own opportunities. Well, that's not always good. Because sometimes you've got to, you got to, decide to go when it seems like the least thing to do. Remember the four lepers that sat at the gate of Samaria? They said, we can't go back in the city. We'll starve to death in there with them. We can't sit still here because we'll starve to death. We're not getting anything to eat. We might as well march toward the enemy's camp because the worst thing that can happen to us is we'll die. We're just going we're, we're to go ahead and and make a quality choice and just go into the enemy's camp and see what happened. The moment they started setting foot toward the enemy's camp, God caused an, an ambushment among the enemy. He, they, they, they heard a great army that was not even there. God caused the, the earth to shake and an army to come. And, they, and they, got, they got scared. The enemy got scared. The Syrians got scared. And they run off, left all their spoils there, left their tents there, left their clothing there, left their gold and silver there, left their horses and cattle there, left everything there for Israel. Praise God. Those four lepers started eating and having a good time till one of them looked at the other and said, we're not doing so well. They said, what do you mean we're not doing so well? Look at what we've got. Yes, we've got a lot, but there's a city back here that needs exactly what we got. Listen to me, Christian. There's a world outside of these four walls 
That means exactly what you have, and your commitment will take it to them. Your determination will take it to them. If you make up your mind that I'm going to put myself in a God opportunity so God can bless me, so I can be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. You shouldn't want to be blessed just to be blessed. You should want to be blessed to be a blessing to others. Yes. Amen. Figure out ways you can bless people. Seriously. Well, I, I just I, I just don't believe in doing that. I, I think I think everybody ought to work hard for what they get. Because I work hard for what I get. Well, if everybody felt that way. Nobody would share the blessing. Would they? I used to work on the streets of Indianapolis with the homeless. Back in the 80s. And one time while we were out feeding them, I met a man, a middle-aged man. In his late 40s, early 50s. The man was a doctor. His wife had had an affair and left him, and it just tore him all to pieces. He nearly lost his mind. He lost his home. He lost everything he had, and he decided to make the streets his home. He told me that I don't have to worry about nothing on the streets. I can just make my home wherever I want it to be. Nobody bothers me, and I don't have any responsibilities. This was a, at one time a very brilliant man who let a circumstance steal his life. What are you letting steal a part of your life? If anything. What's taking some of your joy away? I can detect in here tonight that there's some that's just saying, I just wished I had a little bit of joy. It just seems so hard to have joy. The Bible calls it joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> you can have joy. Joy comes with the package. The night you got saved or the day you got saved, joy came with that package. Peace came with that package. Health came with that package. Freedom came with that package. Success came with that package. Hallelujah. Now you just got to put yourself in a place of opportunity so all of that stuff can be manifested in you and from your life. Amen. Opportunities come to those who are patient. They'll wait for opportunities. Opportunities come for those who are looking for them. Years ago, one preacher called me an opportunist. He said, you, you just, you're just nothing but an opportunist. And I said, you're exactly right. I sure am. Because if you don't want yours, I'll get yours too. I definitely want mine. I want my blessing. Amen. If you don't want yours, I'll take yours too. Amen. You say, well, that's, that, that, that's, that, that's, that's just selfish of you. No, it's careless of you. That's right. That's right. Because you should be holding on to your blessing. Amen? Before someone steals it away. Opportunity. Opportunity comes to those who have visions and dreams. Opportunity comes to those who keep knocking and keep asking and keep seeking. Opportunity arises for those who keep their minds on Jesus Christ. Opportunity comes. And when opportunity comes... Jesus Christ arises and, 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 and miracles begin to happen and the next thing you know, you're free and Hallelujah. free indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. 
glory. Next, I'm almost done. Someone say amen. <laughs> Success is staying focused. You've got to stay focused. You can't lose focus. You need to put blinders on. You need to put blinders on and not look to the left or look to the right, but keep your focus straight ahead. Got to stay focused. Focused on what? Focused on the Word. Focus on Jesus Christ. Focus on God Almighty. Stay focused. Stay focused. Don't let those outside influences influence you. Stay focused. Next. Success involves others. You're going to have to allow other people in your life because success involves other people. You'll never get to where God wants you to be without other people. That's the truth. You'll never get there by yourself. It'll take other people. I don't care what some of these big time evangelists say on TV about how they got to where they got to, but they didn't get there by themselves. Somebody helped them. And somebody is still helping them to keep them where they're at. So they didn't get there by themselves. They got there with help from other people. You're going to need help from somebody. Don't turn away help. I used to, back when I first started preaching, we used to, we used to call them Pentecostal handshakes. Because it wasn't unusual for someone to shake your hand and put some money in it. We call those Pentecostal handshakes. And when that bill was nice and fresh and crisp, you always wanted to look at it because you just do it as a $100 bill. <laughs> I got fooled one time and had one in the $5 bill. I, I felt like going back and giving it back to the person and saying, you need this more than me. <coughs> but we used to have, we used to have, they call some handshake. And, 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 and I never will forget the first time it happened to me, I told the person, oh, no, no, you need to keep this. My old pastor was standing there next to me. I said, oh, you, you, you don't have to do this. My pastor took me off to the side and ripped me up one side and down the other. He said, you're stealing someone's blessing, son. They're being blessed by doing what they're doing. I said, well, if that's the truth, then, pastor, I'll let everybody bless me then. Praise God. I'll look for it in every handshake. Glory to God. <laughs> but you need other people. We all need each other, don't we? We all need each other. Last but not least, success is staying in it for the long haul. Success is staying in it for the long haul. In other words, I'm in this thing for the long haul. I'm not going to quit. You can count on me. Can the pastor count on you? The other question you need to ask yourself. If I was the pastor, could I count on myself? Am I, am I, am I dependable? Am I in it for the long haul? Or am I just in until something upsets me? We just did a little in, the introductory thing tonight. We'll shout tomorrow. I just wanted you. To, I just wanted to get your thinking going tonight. Can you be dependent upon? It's a it's a heavy duty question. Can God depend on you? If. If they were advertising, for example, if they were as advertising revival and the, and the church made up flyers and, and wanted people to pass them out, put them up in businesses or pass them out to some homes or, or whatever, would you pass yours out or would you throw yours in the dumpster? You'd be surprised over the years of my pastoring that I found them in the dumpster. 
rather than pass them out. Got any left? Nope, pastor don't have any left. Gave them all away. Only to, only to find about a hundred of them in the dumpster. Now that's awful. That's sad. But watch this. That's the way a lot of Christians are. Probably more than what you think. That's sad. Now, I didn't say you were that way. I didn't say the majority of the people here was that way. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the Christian community as a whole. You'd be surprised how lazy we are. We want the blessings. You have a church dinner, and you show up and not bring nothing. But you want to take three plates home with you. I guess I better get off of that. Someone, someone told me to Sister Daisy and said, forget about those three plates. I don't believe I want them now. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. There's people who don't want to contribute. And they wonder why they're not blessed. They wonder why they're not good. I just gave you the solution to being blessed tonight. I just gave you the answer to being successful tonight in Christ. And it works. I know it because I live it. Amen. And it works. God has never let me down. God has never let me down. <coughs> oh, there's been times that I thought He wasn't going to show up. There's been times where I thought, God, why are you waiting until the last minute or the last second? But there was always a lesson to learn. There was always something I needed to get out of what God was doing. But you stay in there for the long haul. I want to encourage you to stay in there for the long haul. <coughs> Been serving him this long, ain't no sense in turning back now. What would you turn back to? There's, there's nothing to turn back to. See, I love doing what I do. Sometimes I do it well. Do it so well. You don't have to tell me that I didn't do it too well this evening. I understand. Good message. I needed it. I see. I just needed someone to speak up and stroke me. Here, 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 preacher. I got this for you. And she handed me a quarter. And I thought, you 
I thought, what in the world making a spectacle out of yourself? Pushing your way through a crowd just for a quarter and showed it to everybody. And before I got to the car, the Holy Ghost spanked me. <laughs> and told me that that was the last quarter she had. So I've never, I've never done that again. Success. We're going to have a successful revival this week. It's going to be successful. God's going to move in a super spiritual way. Amen. Brother Pat's going to get well so he can partake of it too. Amen. Ain't God good? And all of the time, God's good. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done tonight. The word that you've put in our minds and in our spirits. The questions, God, that you've asked us. Lord, I pray that the answers to the to those questions were pleasing to your ears. I pray that revival stirs in every heart tonight, y'all. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that your will is done in every life. God, that every need is met according to your riches and glory. I pray tonight that every soul receive the engrafted word of God. Lord, I pray tonight that your healing power flow like a river. And God, we give you glory and praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if there's somebody here tonight that you need to be prayed for, Stretch your arm this way. We're going to pray this brother find a job. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak into existence a job right now. A good paying job. Not just a job, but a good paying job. Lord, that will meet every need that he has. Touch his faith, Lord, and encourage it and increase it in the name of Jesus. Solidify his walk in Jesus' name. Oh, God. Stabilize him in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. And let everybody say amen. amen. And amen. Praise God. That's your friend. Take care of him. Take care of him. All right.